ladies and gentlemen, we measured the speakers near field. We measured the speakers at the MLP and Magic Beans designed a target curve for this room, specifically for this room. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna let you finish making your video, but I need to tell everyone about the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit first. This thing is insane. It helped me dial in all of my 9.1.4 Atmos surround sound system, set the crossovers on all four of my subs, and stress test everything so I could get every last penny out of all the gear I bought. This is a must-have. Go to spatialcd.com right now and get your copy. What is up everybody? Hope you're having a great day. I am going to attempt Magic Beans all by myself. I've got the app loaded on my MacBook Pro, which is here on the bed, and I should have a screen capture on the screen of what you are seeing with the Magic Beans app, and I'm gonna be running everything, Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit here, which is going to be running the pink noise. So the next thing I need to have is a way to measure, and I'm using a U-Mic 1 on a microphone shock mount and a really long like 10 or 12 foot cable so I can try to keep the laptop in the center central position and of course the selfie stick. Now some people have called this the magic wand or maybe the magic stick like the 50 cent song. I don't know, but I'll leave links in the description for all this stuff. You might have to change the cable length if you need to. But anyway, let's uh, try to get it started here. First thing we need to do is uh, make some adjustments on the AVR and I'm using the Denon X6700H. Now what we want to do is make sure to turn off Odyssey. So if we go into uh, audio in the, in the setup menu, we make sure Odyssey is turned off and it is. Okay, now next thing we want to do is make sure we get our crossovers off as well because we want to take a full range measurement. Okay, it looks like uh, the crossovers are on, so we need to go to speaker config, set all these to large. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the subwoofers for right now. You probably don't need to do that, but I'm going to do that. Uh, make sure to go uh, check out the other video, which I'll link probably up here or something like that, so you can get Joe's explanation. I'm just going to try and do it as fast as I can, because I actually added uh, two rear height channels. We did a 5.1.2 setup when Joe was here, and since I added the rear height channels, I definitely want to get it uh, dialed in. So all set to large, so we're going to get a full range signal. We need to go into the periodic pink noise section of the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. Oh, we need volume. <laughs> all right, so we know that that is working. Now let's look at the app real quick. As you can see on the app here, we've got four tabs, mic settings, so let's go into there. Now in the mic settings, it says system default. All right, so we want to just double check our sound input settings here. Input, we've got U-Mic 1 USB. This is what we have, this is what we were using, that's it. Now let's get into Magic Beans. We're gonna to go to Mic Settings, and if we just wanna just, Joe says blow into the mic, okay? Uh, now we want to um, uh, select U-Mic, and we wanna enter the serial number. Your serial number is gonna be different, so don't copy mine, it's not a big deal. Nine, six, Five, five. Okay, uh, now we click Next. Now it brings us back out to this area, and you can see the calibration, um, file is there. Now, here we go, true target. Okay, so here's where you would you would select, if you wanted to do custom, you could do custom and it'll, it'll like tell you up firing, you know, or not. And, you know, so you can have a mix of middle heights with uh, up firing fronts and rears or whatever your situation is. You don't necessarily need to do this custom layout thing, but you can if you want to. So. I'm gonna just go back out and select 5.1.4. That's the new setup. Okay, now we just uh, select microphone. Yeah, we're already there. Okay, so here we are, front left, and it says wait five seconds before starting. So here we're gonna go. All right, now if you wanna know this measurement technique, uh, watch the other video because that's gonna explain everything in detail. I'm just gonna try and get this done as quickly as possible. Uh, so front left, I'm gonna hit measure here and then play on the spatial audio Calibration Toolkit for front left. Okay, so we've got green here on the app and we're gonna go to next. Okay, center, we're gonna do the same thing. Select center, hit measure, hit play, let's go. Okay, moving on to the next one, front right. Let's get this guy ready, hit measure, hit play, there we go.
Okay, go to the next one, surround right, which is over here. I'm gonna hit measure, play. Uh, now surround left. Okay, so we're gonna redo that measurement to get a better angle. Okay, surround left. I'm gonna hit measure and then play. All right, okay. Now we are going to get into the height channels, front height left. All right, so I'm gonna redo that one because uh, the cable didn't, <laughs> didn't move all the way. And this is why you have to have super long cables <laughs> if you're trying to do this. Um, okay, so I'm gonna redo front height left. Here we go. Measure and then play. Okay, moving on, front height right. Measure, play. Okay, and since we might need some extra cableage, cableage, I'll move this over because we're gonna do rear height right next. Uh, measure and then play. Okay, rear height left. I'm gonna hit measure, then I'm gonna hit play. Put that guy down there to hit next. Okay, so now we're gonna take MLP, okay? That means main listening position measurements. And we're gonna do it all over again. Um, the only difference is we're gonna do subwoofers as well. Main listening position, uh, I could shorten this a little bit. Okay, main listening position, my head's usually about here. Measure, play. Okay, get ready with the center. Measure, play. Front right. Okay, we're gonna do surround right next. Surround right, measure, play. Okay, next up is surround left. Measure, play. All right, so now it's height channels. We get this ready for front height left. Measure, front height left, and now play. Let's get ready, front height right. Measure, play. Uh, next one's gonna be rear height right. Measure, play. Rear height left, ready to go. Measure, and then play. Okay, now the one last thing is the LFE, but I turned them off, so let me put this guy down real quick. And go turn them back on, because you guys are all pros, right? You guys are all pros, professionals. Uh, we need to go speaker, manual setup, speaker config, and we go subwoofer, two speakers, because I have two subwoofers. Now, I'm going to just play the LFE track because they were kind of not on, so they're, they're set to auto. Maybe you want to turn auto off. Okay, there we go. They've now woken up. One of them's working, the other one's working. Okay, cool. So now that I know they work, I'm going to measure the LFE from the main listening position. This is the only time you measure the LFE. Next, LFE, here we go. Measure and play. Okay, now we hit next. It says 95% complete. Now it says working. All right, it's filtering all of them. Do you want to save this measurement? Yes. I'll call it Shauna's room 5.1.4. Save it as whatever you like. Okay, now export format. Now, if you don't have any of the export formats, you know, you could do 10 band or 31 band EQ, depending on what your AVR supports. Uh, there's Dirac Live, Dirac Live Bass Control, Emotiva, Equalizer APO, Generic. There's some for Mini DSP, Storm Audio, Wipow, but we are looking for Multi QX per channel filters. Go export and I am going to toss it in the desktop. Okay, hit save. All right, now it's doing its thing. Oh yeah, toot toot toot, magic beans, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, it looks like it didn't like my, uh, my name of the folder or the save file is Chana's Room 5.1.4, so I just said <laughs> Chana's Room 5. So if we go into the folder, we can see filters for center, front height left, front height right, front left, front right, LFE. Filters for rear height left, rear height right, surround left, surround right. Date modified, 5.55 p.m. Oh my goodness, gracious Joe.
You know what I mean? Nah, me, nah, me, nah, me. Okay, cool. So that's it for the Magic Beans app. So we can just close this out. We've already saved everything. We don't need to do anything else. Okay, so the first part is done. We've measured the speaker near field in situ, meaning in its place, right? With everything that's normally gonna be there. And then we measured each speaker again from the main listening position, the MLP. That was the only time we measured the LFE channel, right? We didn't take a near field of the LFE channel. We don't, because uh, subwoofer is always gonna be the subwoofer plus the room. So that part is done. The measurements are done. Magic Beans has calculated the filters. Now we need to get the filters into the Denon X6700H. We're gonna use Multi-QX, which is on the PC. So I gotta set up a camera to kind of film the screen and then we go from there. All right, so I had to bust out a second camera as the other one is recording the screen. Okay, so the next step, as Joe says, is we're going to run a quick Odyssey calibration for levels and delay and not really use any of the other stuff. So let's do that. Plug in the standard mic into the AVR and I set it up over here. It's the same magic stick or magic wand, but with the Odyssey mic that's plugged into the AVR. So we're gonna put that right here and we are going to click measure over here on the Multi-QX. Here in Multi-QX, we are going to adjust sub-levels. Subwoofer one. Now I've already done this part. Probably gonna wake up the sub. There we go. And Joe says that you wanna have it around 82, which is where it's hitting. A little bit of, uh, above is fine. He said to run it hot a little bit. Um, so this one is good. Subwoofer two. Probably have to wait, wait for that to wake up. That's averaging 82 and a half. That's fine, we're gonna stop it. Now we're gonna get into a measure, a quick measure. We're only gonna measure one position. I need to hit measure position, but I need to get, also need to get out of the way. So let me do this from over here. Here we go. All right, so as you can see here, it's got the distance and the level. So this is what we wanna use and we want to hit exclude position and then it turns all pink. Now we need to go to calibration settings here, number six, and we can see that the trims and the distances are already set. Okay, there are some settings you wanna to go to. Go in here, go to features, and make sure you've got enable precise trims, override filter cutoff limit, negative 40 dB, and make sure to keep enable EQ headroom expansion unchecked. All right, so again, just to recap, we want to exclude this position here because we don't want Odyssey to do the actual calibration. But this was a quick way to measure distances and level. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to design target curve, section four here. By default, it has high theater frequency roll off one. We wanna get rid of that. Mid-range compensation, we wanna get rid of that. And now we've got a blank slate. All right, so now what we need to do is import EQ, as you see up here. We're going to import the EQ one by one. Let's go over here, import EQ. All right, so we're gonna select front left and hit select file, and it's gonna bring this up. Downloads Chana's room five, that's right. Chana's room five, uh, front left. You gotta make sure you read this because alphabetically, center is first. Okay, so front left, open. The import of 10 supported EQ items was successful. Hit, hit, hit okay. So we've now imported the front left, okay? And as you can see here, this is what uh, we've got. Okay, so now let's go import EQ and do the front right. Let's select file, front right, open, boom. So here you can see both front right and front left. Okay, and import EQ, center, select file, center, open, boom, done, okay? Now surround left, okay? Surround left, done. Import surround right, 
surround right. Okay, next one is front height left, front height left. Okay, front height right, front height right. Okay, so we got, again, both of them are here, front heights. Okay, next one, import EQ is rear height left, rear height left. And import, got rear height right. And rear height right. Okay, now import EQ for subwoofer e, sub EQ HT. And LFE, filters from LFE. So once we've got everything imported, now we need to change the cutoff mode from auto to disabled. As you can see, we don't want it to automatically roll off. We also want to disable auto leveling. So let's just go do that for all of these filters here. As you can see, the cutoff mode for the subwoofer is already disabled, and we want to check the box for disable auto leveling there as well. All right, so now let's go to filter settings. Okay, now Joe kind of is a little paranoid about this doing the proper limit, so he takes this to manual and he put, puts in 20 manually. So go to manual, type it in, 20. Now the subwoofer is gonna be a little bit different. We wanna take this to 10, okay? Boom, you see that? Bam, all right. Now another thing to mention about the 10 hertz on the subwoofer, these subs are actually pretty beast, so you might wanna set this manually to 20, just in case, depending on your sub, it's gonna be different. Okay, so the next thing we need to go to is calibration settings, number six. All right, so here we are in calibration settings, everybody, and what we wanna do is uh, change one thing here. Base management, set that to manual. We got 40 and 60 for the front stage and the, you know, the center's at 60. Yeah, I don't mind leaving it there. Surrounds at 40 because they're towers. Front high left and front high right are at 80. Now here is what we need to change. And we wanna change this guy to small because you can't change it later, okay? If you change this to, or keep it at large, you won't be able to change it back later. So keep it at small. And I'm pretty okay with these numbers here. Maybe, yeah, center channel doesn't need to go to 40, but we can uh, change this at any point in time afterward on the AVR directly. All right, so that's it. Now we go to finalize. Okay, we wanna enable multi-EQ and keep it at reference and everything else, keep it off. And we're gonna hit transfer filters. You're about to transfer, hit okay. And I had the previous Magic Beans on preset one. And for preset two, I'm gonna do uh, an Odyssey calibration like normal. So I'm gonna send this to preset one. And now it's transferring to the Denon 6700H. All right, it looks like the Denon is active again. And it, look, it says reconnect to the Denon. So that means um, it has disconnected from the app. Okay, what we're gonna do is go to load previous. Chana's room 5.1.4. Okay, it's loading. Now, right now, we're gonna go to RTA for alignment. I'm gonna hit that and then hit play. What is up, everybody? Future Chana here. And what you're looking at right now is the custom target curve that Magic Beans created. And you can actually see our verification of the speaker actually looking like the target curve. So. That's what we did, ladies and gentlemen. We measured the speakers near field. We measured the speakers at the MLP and Magic Beans designed a target curve for this room, specifically for this room. And then we had to input that data into the Denon and we can now verify that the speakers are following this custom curve. So that's what this whole Magic Beans thing is about, literally, this is a manual way of calibrating your system, which took Joe six hours. And the revolutionary part about this app is that it doesn't take six hours to do. Probably takes about half an hour if I didn't have to stop filming and I had a bunch of mistakes that I had to redo. Maybe it would have taken me less time to do it. But as I do it, I'm gonna get better and better. And I also wanted to use the laptop so I can get a proper screen recording. 
if you were to use a mobile device like a tablet or a phone, it would probably go a lot faster. Anyway, let me know which AVRs you want me to do Magic Beans on next, Yamaha or Arcam. I've got those two in house. I had to let go of the Pioneer, so I don't have a Pioneer or Onkyo or Integra, but uh, let me know in the comments which ones you guys wanna see so that I can try to find a way to acquire one of those things so that we can have like a full on tutorial on how to run Magic Beans on every AVR out there. That would be pretty cool. Let me know which ones you are interested in seeing down in the comments below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.